There is a secret luxury hotel credit card that has been discontinued, so it's banned for any new applicants. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to work around that and product change to still get the Chase Ritz Carlton card. But even more importantly, why you need the Chase Ritz Carlton card in the first place and the core value that the card has. Plus, I'll even compare the Chase Ritz Carlton card to the Hilton Aspire and Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant to prove why the Chase Ritz Carlton card would actually win for a lot of you. So as always, we're just gonna hop right into the video, but before I do that, do me a huge favor and hit that like button and subscribe down below because it's a free and easy way to help support my channel. So before I get into some of the core details on the Chase Ritz Carlton card, you're gonna wanna know how you can actually get that card in the first place. The Chase Ritz Carlton card is a co-branded Chase credit card which like I said earlier, has been discontinued, so you can't directly apply for the card any longer. Instead, you're going to need a product change to the card from either the Marriott Bonvoy Bold, Marriott Bonvoy Boundless, or Marriott Bonvoy Bountiful. You'll need to keep that other Marriott credit card open for at least one year, and you need to have a credit limit of at least $10,000 in order to execute this product change. The Chase Ritz Carlton card itself doesn't have any sort of welcome bonus, so you'll wanna be strategic in terms of which Marriott credit card that you apply to first to maximize that welcome offer, and then of course, transfer that card over into the Ritz-Carlton card. And then in terms of actually executing that product change, you can either do this from secure messaging or by calling Chase. So that's how to actually get the Chase Ritz-Carlton card, but now let's talk about some of the core details so you can understand why you should get it in the first place. To start with, the Chase Ritz-Carlton card has an annual fee of $450, which is high, but it's actually gonna be lower than a lot of other high tier hotel credit cards. You will have some quick ways that pack a punch to get you value, and the first of those is gonna be a $300 annual flight credit. That flight credit is a little bit less straightforward because you don't just get it automatically applied like a credit on the Chase Sapphire Reserve, Instead, you actually have to send a secure message or get on the phone with Chase to get them to trigger your credit. You're gonna be talking with a live human, so there will be some flexibility in terms of getting that credit applied, but in general, the credit is always gonna work for things like baggage fees or seat upgrades, and it can sometimes work for things like United Travel Bank, award taxes and fees, and gift cards, or even like airport parking. This credit is definitely gonna be subjective and it's gonna be on a case-by-case -case basis, so I can understand in some circumstances why it would be annoying to use and have to take a more hands-on approach to activate it. But also if you're willing to just use it to upgrade to some premium cabins a couple times a year, then it could be a really useful credit that's easily used. However, the best benefit on the Chase Ritz Carlton that can by itself make up for that $450 annual fee is going to be the free net award. Essentially every year on the Chase Ritz Carlton card, you're gonna get a free net award that is valued up to 85,000 Marriott points. And an important thing to consider is that Marriott does have a top off feature as well, which basically allows you to add in another 15,000 Marriott points on top of that free net award that you're booking. So basically what you're able to do is that you can book a Marriott property worth up to 100,000 Marriott points per night because you can utilize that 85K Marriott free net award and then an additional 15,000 Marriott points as part of the top off feature. And then you'd be able to put a really high percentage of Marriott properties into that range that you'd be able to book. Obviously, just from a feasibility standpoint, you're not gonna be staying at the very top end of that range every single year and at the most expensive properties that you can. So a lot of the value from the free net award is gonna vary from a year to year basis. But regardless, you're still gonna get a very high amount of value and a huge chunk of that annual fee from this free net award. The Chase Rose Carlton is also gonna give you Marriott Gold Elite status, which is nice and can give you occasional room upgrades, but it won't move the needle as much as something like Platinum Elite status on the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant. And then the Chase Rose Carlton card is also gonna give you airport lounge access as well as you'll get access to Chase Sapphire and Priority Pass lounges. Plus on the Ritz Carlton card, you're gonna get free authorized users and you can bring in unlimited guests with you to airport lounges when you go to them which is gonna make the Chase Ritz Carlton card a great option for those of you who travel with your family. You will also get three upgrades to Ritz Carlton clubs each year, but this is gonna be specific to paid stays. The travel protections on the Chase Ritz Carlton card are also really strong and similar to the Chase Sapphire Reserve, except for the fact that again, the Ritz Carlton card is the cheaper and more valuable card. When it's all said and done, a lot of times you're gonna to get to that $450 annual fee just from the 85K Marriott Free Night Award. And if you haven't gotten to the annual fee already from the Free Night Award, 
then you definitely will when you take into account the $300 airline credit as well, when you use that for seat upgrades or other ways to activate that credit. And then the way that I like to look at it is that every other benefit, so like airport lounge access, Ritz-Carlton club upgrades, and travel protections, or just the cherries on top. So those are the core details on the Chase Ritz-Carlton card, but who does this card actually work for? Well, I would say that there's a couple different characteristics that you probably fall into if you're gonna get the most amount of value from the Ritz card, and it's gonna make the most sense to you. First of all, I would consider the Chase Ritz-Carlton card to be a relatively simple card to get positive value from since you basically just need to utilize the Marriott Free Night Award and then that airline credit if you need to, to get positive value. So I think people who definitely prioritize these simple ways to get positive value is definitely people who are gonna benefit from this card. And then the Chase Ritz Carlton card is gonna work best for people who are okay with that manual process to activate the airline credit. Because again, it's not gonna be as simple as just having the credit automatically trigger like with some other credit cards. Instead, you're gonna to have to actually get on a secure line or a call chase specifically, and then work with them a little bit to actually get that credit activated. Obviously, your travel preferences are gonna to wanna to align with the Chase Ritz Carlton card in the sense of being able to utilize that free net award every single year. And then I could see the Chase Ritz Carlton card working really well for those of you who don't like the Amex credits on the Hilton Aspire or Bonvoy Brilliant that are a little bit harder to maximize in some ways. Because again, on the Ritz-Carlton card, you just have the one annual credit plus the free night award. If we compare the Chase Ritz-Carlton card to the other big players in the luxury hotel credit card space, I wanted to compare the Ritz-Carlton card to the Hilton Aspire and Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant so we can see who these cards would be best for. Again, if you value simplicity, then the Ritz-Carlton card might be the best option for you because it's arguably the easiest way to get positive value. The Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant is gonna be the best card for Marriott loyalists, and especially if you find the credit on the Ritz-Carlton card to be kind of annoying to use to actually call Chase and have them manually activate the credit. Plus on the Bonvoy Brilliant, you're gonna get platinum elite status instead of just gold elite status which can take you further for your Marriott stays. Obviously the Hilton Aspire card is gonna be the best card for Hilton loyalists, but I would also argue is gonna be the most valuable hotel credit card period. But then the question becomes, are you okay with Hilton? Because at least for myself, despite the Hilton Aspire card being the most valuable hotel credit card from a pure value standpoint, I find myself working backwards too often with Hilton to where I have to look at where their properties are first. I then adapt that to where I'm gonna end up traveling to when it should be the other way around to where I wanna travel where I wanna travel and the hotels that I prioritize the most should have the most footprint in those areas. With Marriott, this is usually the opposite because there's a much better footprint in a lot of the areas in South America or Central America that I like to travel to frequently. And so I usually am just able to pick where I want to travel to and there's almost always gonna be a decent option with Marriott in that area. So I haven't made a final decision yet, but even after being at Team Hilton for a long time, I think my most immediate need is actually to get a higher tier Marriott card first. I would love to have a combination of the Hilton Aspire plus my Marriott high tier credit card both together in my long-term setup, but at least in the near term, I think the next hotel credit card that I get, at least when I first get into the luxury hotel space, it's gonna be either the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant or the Chase Ritz Carlton. The Chase Ritz Carlton would make the most sense for me from a simplicity standpoint, but the Bonvoy Brilliant would make the most sense for me from a Marriott loyalty standpoint. But in conclusion, for a lot of people, I do think the Chase Ritz Carlton card is the right choice. And even though you do have to jump through some hoops to actually be able to get it in the first place, I do think that it's worth it. But if you did enjoy this video, then go watch this next video where I talked about the validity for the Hilton trifecta. Thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace.